One of the best ways to make money in crypto is arbitrage, but you need some capital to do it. Unless you use what we call a flash loan. If you combine a flash loan with arbitrage, you can potentially make $10,000 in just one transaction. And the only money at risk is the transaction fee. You risk $0 of your own capital. If you don't know me, I'm Julian, and on my channel, Eat the Blocks, I explain blockchain technology. To understand flash loan arbitrage, we need to separate the two concepts, flash loan and arbitrage. So first, let's start with a flash loan. So a flash loan is a way to borrow a lot of money on the blockchain without any collateral and without asking for anybody permission. So here, how it works. First, you need to deploy a smart contract if you want to take a flash loan. It doesn't make any sense to take a flash loan directly from your wallet. So as a trader, first, you will execute a function of your smart contract. Then this smart contract is going to borrow money from the flash loan. So this is going to be another smart contract. Usually, flash loans are part of other DeFi protocol that already have some liquidity like Uniswap or Aave. And you can borrow as much money as there is in this DeFi protocol. For example, if you borrow from a liquidity pool on Uniswap that has $10 million in the pool, that's the maximum that you can borrow. So you borrow the money, the money is in your smart contract, and now you can do whatever you want with this money. So you will use the money to invest in another DeFi protocol, and hopefully you will make some profit. And after, you need to reimburse the flash loan. So you reimburse the money that you initially borrowed, plus also a small fee. And hopefully after that, you still have a profit and so you can send the profit back to the address that triggered the whole process. What's really important to understand is that everything happened in a single transaction. So if your smart contract doesn't reimburse the money to the flash loan at the end of the transaction or just reimburse a part of it, the code in the flash loan smart contract is going to throw an error and the whole transaction is going to fail. So there is no way to cheat the system borrow a lot of money with your flash loan and not reimburse it. Next, what about arbitrage? An arbitrage allows you to make money if you spot a price difference for the same asset across two different exchanges. For example, if Ethereum is worth 2000 DAI and another exchange is 2200 DAI, then you're going to buy on exchange A and you're going to sell on exchange B and you're going to make 200 DAI of profit. So in order to make a decent profit, you will need to have a lot of capital. And that's when flash loans are very useful. So let's see how we can combine a flash loan with an arbitrage. So we are going to create an arbitrage smart contract and the trader is going to call a function on this smart contract to trigger the whole process. Then we are going to borrow some DAI from the flash loan. So let's say we borrow 2 million DAI. Then with this money, we're going to buy 1000 ETH at 2000 DAI each at exchange A. So this ETH is going to go to the arbitrage smart contract. And after that, we're going to sell this ETH in exchange B at a higher price for 2,200 DAI. And so in the end, in our arbitrage smart contract, we have 2,200,000 DAI. We use most of it to reimburse the DAI that we borrowed from the flash loan. And for the rest, we take it for ourselves. It's our profit. For our project, for the flash loan, we're going to use Uniswap. And we're going to do an arbitrage between Uniswap and SushiSwap. So the flash loan of Uniswap works slightly differently. So let's see how this works. So we'll have our arbitrage smart contract. So our trader is going to initiate the whole process. Then we borrow 2 million DAI from Uniswap. Then we are going to buy 1000 ETH at 2000 DAI from SushiSwap. And after we need to reimburse the flash loan, we can either reimburse in DAI or we can reimburse in another currency using the current price of Uniswap. So for example, if on Uniswap 1 ETH equal 2200 DAI, then we only need to reimburse our 2 million DAI, we need only 909 ETH and we'll still have 91 ETH that we can keep as a profit. So now you understand how the whole process works. Next, our challenge will be to turn this into code. All right, so there is a lot of code, so we're not going to do live coding, but I'm going to walk you through the finished code. So you can find this in the GitHub repo of either block in this folder. So this is a truffle project. And the most important is in the contracts folder, arbitrage.sol. 
So we use 3DT 0.6 because this is what is, what is used by Uniswap. Here we import a couple of interfaces that we need in order to interact with Uniswap and SushiSwap. And after we have our contract, so we define a couple of variable here. First, we have the factory of Uniswap. So that's a central hub in the Uniswap ecosystem. It allows to have some information about the different liquidity pools. Then deadline, this is going to be used when we're going to do our trade. Then we're going to have a pointer to the, to the Sushi router, which is a central spot contract in the SushiSwap ecosystem. And that is used to execute trade in SushiSwap liquidity pools. Internally, SushiSwap reuses a lot of the code of Uniswap. So that's why here for the interface of the Sushi router, we actually use the interface of the Uniswap router. It's exactly the same. Then in the constructor, we're going to initialize the value of the Uniswap factory and we're going to initialize the Sushi router. Then we have the start arbitrage function. So that's the function that the trader is going to call to execute our arbitrage. So it's up to the trader to monitor price differences between Uniswap and SushiSwap. So probably with a custom script. And when we spot a price difference, then we call this start arbitrage function. Then for the argument, so you have the addresses of the two tokens that we, we want to use for our arbitrage, for example, if die. So one of these amounts is going to be zero and the other one is going to be the amount that we want to borrow for our flash loan. If amount zero equals zero and amount one equal one million token, it means we are going to borrow for one million token one. And conversely, if amount zero is one million, then we're going to borrow one million token zero. And so in this case, amount one needs to be zero. Okay, so after here, we get the address of the pair smart contract of Uniswap for these two tokens. So here, the order doesn't matter. Uniswap know how to deal with it. So here we make sure that this pair smart contract actually exists. Oh yeah, so if you don't know the ecosystem of Uniswap, basically the pair smart contract is the liquidity pool of Uniswap. That's where the trading actually happened. Then here it's where we are going to initiate the flash loan. So here we create a pointer to the pair smart contract for the two token and we call the swap function. So this is a low level function. And normally when you trade with Uniswap, you call another smart contract, which is the, the router and the router behind the hood, it called this swap function on the pair contract. But when you want to do a flash loan, you need to directly call the swap function on the pair contract yourself. So we specify the two amounts. So as a reminder here, one of these amounts is going to be zero and the amount that is not zero, that's the amount of token that you want to borrow. Then address this, that's the address where we want to receive the token that we borrow. And here, the last argument, we need to make sure that this is not empty. This is what's going to trigger the flash loan. Otherwise, if this is empty, this is just a normal swap operation when, when a trader just want to buy or sell some token and it will not trigger the flash loan. So then Uniswap is going to call back our smart contract. It's going to call back this function here, Uniswap v2 call. So this is a convention. Uniswap is expecting your smart contract to have this function. So it's going to pass a couple of arguments. So the sender, so that's the address that triggered the flash loan. So that's basically the address of our arbitrage smart contract. Then the amount of token that we borrowed. So depending on which one you borrowed, one of them is going to be equal to zero and the other will be the actual amount. And then the data that we pass here, but we can just ignore this. Then we build an array of addresses so this is going to be used in order to do the trade later then here we get the amount of token that we borrowed so it can be amount zero or amount one then we get the addresses of the two token in the liquidity pool of uniswap then we make sure that the call come from one of the pair contract of uniswap we don't want other smart contracts to mess with our arbitrage contract and potentially do weird things, then we need to make sure that one of the amount is equal to zero. Then here we are going to populate our pass array. So this is very important. That's where we define the direction of the trade. So for example, if amount zero equals zero, it means that on SushiSwap, we are going to sell token one for token zero. 
And conversely, if, if amount zero is not equal to zero, then we're gonna sell token zero for token one. Then we build a pointer to the token that we're gonna sell on SushiSwap. Then we're gonna allow the router of SushiSwap to spend our token. This is necessary for trading on Uniswap. Then here we calculate the amount of token that we will need to reimburse to the flash loan of SushiSwap. Then below we are going to sell the token we borrow from Uniswap. We're going to sell it on SushiSwap. So here this is the amount that we want to sell. And here this is the minimum amount of the other token that we want to receive in exchange. That's the amount we're going to need to reimburse the flash loan. So give it the pass to tell SushiSwap what we want to sell and what we want to buy. Then the address that's going to receive the token in output, this is our smart contract. Then we have the deadline parameters. This is the time limit after which an order will be rejected by SushiSwap. So it's mainly useful if you send an order directly from your wallet to SushiSwap. What can happen is that if your transaction is stuck on the network for let's say a couple of days and finally it's mine, then you can actually do a trade at a really bad price because at the time when you initially send the trade, the market was at a certain level and you specify a minimum price that was good at that time but the market has changed and now it became a really bad price so the deadline is used as a protection here but in our case if our transaction become stuck then the price difference that we spot between Uniswap and SushiSwap will not be valid anymore and our arbitrage will not work and we will not be able to reimburse the flash loan so the whole transaction is going to fail anyway so we don't have any use for this deadline but we still need to specify something and finally for the end I actually forgot a line so I did a correction let me reload the file so first of all we get a pointer to the other token that we got as output from SushiSwap then a portion of this token is going to be used to reimburse the flash loan of Uniswap here and we know the correct amount to reimburse because before we call the get amount in function of Uniswap and finally for the rest it's our profit so transaction origin this is the address that initiated the whole transaction so that will be yourself or the script that you use to monitor the price difference between Uniswap and SushiSwap. Next what do you have to do to actually make money? You need to one deploy the arbitrage smart contract to the ethereum blockchain and two create a script to monitor the price differences between SushiSwap and uniswap and trigger the flash loan automatically if you want to keep learning about flash loan check out this playlist it covers flash loan in much more detail i will see you there